We're having fun here, no? Man, oh man, the Dallas Mavericks get a major statement victory. Their second one in about the span of a week. I, I considered the Houston one one as well. But Dallas goes to L.A. and beats the Lakers, who were riding a 10 or maybe even an 11-game win streak coming into this game. The number one seed in the Western Conference. They go into their house and they pretty much dominate this game. The first half was real close, but in the second half, Dallas really seized control and just took it from there. Uh, in this game, you have Luka go off, again, falling one rebound shy of a triple-double. I'm sure he's happier with the win than he would be for the triple-double. But Luka goes 33 minutes, 27 points, 10 assists, 9 rebounds, 10 of 23 from the field, and 4 of 10 from 3, including a sick... Step back three in LeBron's face about midway through the fourth quarter. That pretty much, it, it felt like the dagger. Because L.A., even though Dallas had really tightened down defensively and pretty much smothered L.A. Uh, in the second half, that was really what buried it. Because it was it was still kind of floating around a little bit where you kind of were a little bit weary of L.A. maybe making one last push. And that step back three just completely ended any notion of that. Dallas with a major, major statement victory. Luke also, hey, shout out on the defense. Three steals as well. Quality day for him. Speaking of quality days, we got to give some respect. I don't have his stats here on the board. I should, in all frankness. Uh, Dwight Powell played the best game of his season so far. So for all the negativity that we've given Dwight, myself included, the guy deserves a lot of credit here because this is by far his finest performance of the season great on the defensive end in this case uh make, makes a lot of plays around the rim for dallas 15 points nine boards in 32 minutes for powell uh his shooting six of 11 a solid performance nothing that's gonna blow you away but very steady hands i would say for powell here a lot of great plays a lot of good uh screen setting opening things up for them on the drive and uh the next guy who i do have on the board delon wright had probably his Best game as a Maverick at this point. 17 points, 9 assists. Yeah, I'm going to say that's his best complete performance. Also, 5 boards. 7 of 12 from the field. 3 of 6 from 3. He shot the ball confidently, and it showed. He wasn't just knifing his way through the defense, slicing between the space and, you know, getting reverse layups or, uh, as Mark Follower would say, jackhammering his way to another 2 points, which just sounds very dirty to me. Uh, but he also gives you help on the defensive end with four steals of his own. Dallas was just very, very relentless on the defensive end in the second half. You saw a lot of help, a lot of good. Uh, there were times where LeBron got an open lane for an easy dunk, but Dallas very good, very active on the defensive end. Good help defense, good presence. And I felt like the Lakers really they they looked like they were looking for calls. They were going into the you know at the Mavericks defense and. Rather than really being the aggressor, it seemed like they were looking for a lot of calls. Whereas I felt like Dallas just said, okay, I don't care what the ref's calling versus what they're not calling. I'm going to be relentless and attack, and I'm going to make this happen. And that's that's how you got the the separation, I felt. Obviously, in that third quarter, Luka is a huge part of it again. The third quarter feels like the time in which Luka Doncic really takes over a lot of nights. 16 points for Luka in the third quarter and assisted on 10 other points as well, making for 26 total points from Luka, either scored or assisted in the third quarter as Dallas took what was a three-point deficit at the half and stretched it to pretty much, uh, I think it was, what was it, like 19, I want to say? It was like 18 or 19 going into the fourth quarter. I mean, complete flip of roles here. Uh, role reversal from the first half where it felt like LA came out strong and Dallas was kind of the one back on their heels just trying to weather the storm and yeah Dallas Dallas answered the bell this is a game that Dallas you feel like they had it circled because they felt like they should have won that first game in Dallas and you know whether you want to talk about controversial calls or no calls or whatever it doesn't really matter the point is Dallas had that game circled on their calendar at least mentally came in and returned the favor and basically in dominating fashion took care of business the way that they feel that they should have the first time around. And this is a 
this is a statement that'll get people looking a little bit. Like the Clippers game after that, you saw a lot of people on the national scale go like, all right, Luca's overrated, Dallas, whatever. It's early, they'll fall. And, you know, yeah, we are still early in the year. We're less than 20 games into the season. But you know what? They came in in the day fifth in the West, went to the house of number one, and slapped the taste out of their mouth. The 17-2 and Lakers, hottest team in the NBA. They've lost only to the Clippers and the Raptors prior. Dallas went into their house, slapped the taste out of it. Out of their house? Out of their mouth. And, uh... This is this is really really good. KP also had a pretty good game here, 28 point or sorry, 28 minutes, 15.6 boards. Rebounding took a hit here. Uh he got a lot a lot more effectiveness I think in this game in a small exposure. 5 of 11 from the field, 3 of 8 from 3. Still free throws a little iffy, 2 of 4, but yeah, not a bad night for him there. Uh you see his presence and the way he he makes things difficult. Him challenging LeBron at the rim. Him having to switch off on LeBron with LeBron in the corner and forcing LeBron into a tough three in the corner, which LeBron bricked. That all was very indicative of the game for the Mavericks. LA not really wanting the contact, not wanting the physicality and the tangled mess of arms that the Dallas defense was throwing at them. So instead of worrying about getting stripped or anything like that, LA settled for a lot of three-point shots. I mean, hell, you went like eight minutes into the third quarter and LA had was like more technicals than they had uh, field goals made in the quarter. I mean, it was complete reversal there. L.A. just came out flat in the second half, and Dallas was like, yeah, no, okay, I'll take over here. Speaking of uh, standout players for the Mavericks here, Jackson finally gets some time. 44 Jacks, my dude, finally gets some good burn in this game here. Jackson in 15 minutes scored 15 points. In the first half, when not a whole lot was working for Dallas, Justin Jackson was working for Dallas. And yeah, he gets one board, no assists. 6 of 10 from the field, 3 of 5 from 3. You got to find more minutes for Justin Jackson, man. You just do. More often than not, even when you roll him out there, even when you haven't been using him very consistently over the stretch of several games, you roll him out there, more often than not, the dude is going to make things happen. He's shooting like 44 or 45% from three this year. You need to get him minutes. I understand that Tim Hardaway Jr. has been red hot for the Mavericks in the past few games. He had eight points on this game. Two rebounds, one assist, 3 of 10 shooting, 0 of 7 from 3. So that cooled off a bit. Hopefully this is just a blip and he's not just going to hit a wall here. Like I, we talked about in that Clippers game, that felt like it could have been a wall, but then he was fantastic against Phoenix, Hardaway Jr. was. So hopefully, uh, hopefully he can kind of keep that momentum going. But even if he starts to come back down to the median of what his career has projected, Justin Jackson is playing the best basketball of his young career. Keep in mind, same draft class, still a lottery pick from the Dennis Smith Jr. draft. And as a result of that, Dallas needs to get, I think, more out of him. He's a very good three-point shooter for his career, obviously shooting great with Dallas. I think he was 39% last year when he came over in the Harrison Barnes trade from Sacramento, and now he's shooting like 44 or 45% this season with the Mavericks. I don't know what it is after this game. I just know entering the game, that's where he was at. So... Uh, this this was a great, great, complete performance from the Mavericks here. Other guys you have that make some contributions. Nothing tremendous in this case. Brunson, you know, he gets 11 minutes, no points, 0 of 3 from the field. Two rebounds, two assists, though, so finding other little ways to make an impact. Curry, 16 minutes, 3 points, 1 of 5 from the field, 1 of 4 specifically from 3. So that's not great, but... You got enough working, you got enough weapons, and with the way you were playing defense and the way you were, frankly, rebounding, you were going to have that advantage here. In the game, the Lakers shot 46%. So as much as we talk about defense, you still look at the Lakers' percentage and you're like, dude, you're going to be hard-pressed to win some games where you're giving up that kind of field goal percentage. Well, when you're forcing turnovers like the Mavericks were, and when you consider what they did in the second half versus the first half, they gave up, I think, 62 points in the first half. And in the game, give up a total of 100. So much better in the second half in that regard. 38 points allowed in the second half. Close to cutting that number in half from the first half. That's very good for the Mavericks there. And, you know, for them, offensively, they they more than... Uh, they didn't just uh, repeat what they did in the first half offensively with 59 points. They take it a step further and they get, you know, a total of 114. So 
solid there. Three-point shooting was not great for either team in this game. The Mavericks shot 35%. That's not bad, but it's nothing amazing. 17 of 49. The Lakers, though, did not shoot threes well. 7 of 27. Danny Green missed a couple. He was gimpy at one point. LeBron missed several. Anthony Davis struggled as well in that regard. Free throws, uh, much much fewer attempts at the line tonight for Dallas or this afternoon for Dallas compared to the Phoenix game where they shot 38 and made 33. This game, they go 13 of 18 at the stripe for 70, 72%. The Lakers go 13 of 16, so not a lot of foul shots for either team, surprisingly. Lakers 13 of 16 for 81%. Dallas had fewer turnovers with 13 compared to 17 for the Lakers. Uh, were out-assisted by one, 24 to 25. They did out-rebound LA, however, 51 to 45, including 16 offensive boards compared to nine. Here, here was the big thing, though. As much as we talk about second half defense and turnovers and all of that, Dallas, in terms of second chance points, outscored LA 23 to five in this game. Second chance points, 23 to five. You are going to win a lot of games when you're able to hold them in check in that regard batting down the hatches defensively and, you know, force some turnovers. And when you're then able to get second chances of your own to, to make up for if you're not shooting as high of a percentage or if the three ball's not quite falling like you'd like it to fall, the Mavericks have a t- as a team over the past several games have been shooting much better, like 42% as a team from three uh, compared to the start of the year when it was, hey, 35%. So Mavericks pretty much did what they did uh, in the first half of the the first 10 games or so of the season in terms of their three-point shooting as a team. But because of those second-chance points, they were able to make up for it in a big, big way here. Uh, LA did have three blocks compared to just one for Dallas. I believe that was actually Dodo, I want to say, on LeBron, which is nice. Uh, And Lakers had three technical fouls. Not a good third quarter for the Lakers as that all kind of came unglued. For the Lakers, you had LeBron go 36 minutes, 25 points, 9 boards, 8 assists on 11 of 20, 0 of 5 from 3, which is, again, why when he's taking that 3 in the corner against KP, you're kind of looking at that as a Mavericks fan, and you're like, all right, you haven't hit any, you haven't thrown it in to the water from the edge of a boat all game in terms of 3-point shooting. You got a huge mismatch in terms of speed and power over KP, and rather than go at him, you're just going to kind of dribble around in the corner, cross up, not even cross up to create space, just kind of you know, try and rock him to sleep a little bit to get the shot off. And yeah, he gets a clean shot off, but not not the best possession you could have had there. And that was a last gasp for them, it kind of felt like. Four steals for LeBron, though, so he did make some damage. And that a lot of that was in the first half, too, during that run out for the Lakers. Lakers took routinely in the first half 10-point advantages, 9-point advantages. They were in a lot of control before the Mavericks reeled them in at the end of the first half to cut it down to three points. They cut it at the end of the first quarter from 10 to about five, I want to say, and then they cut it down to three going into half. So really weathered a lot of the storm there. Uh, Anthony Davis, 36 minutes as well, 27 points, 10 boards, 10 of 21 from the field. Kind of like the first game, him and LeBron stat lines were pretty comparable in that regard. Anthony Davis had a fantastic first half and a very uh, forgettable second half in this game. And I I credit a lot of that to Dwight Powell, to the Dallas defense in general. I think that was very, very good for them to slow things down. The The only other Laker in double digits is Caruso with 10 points, four boards. So, yeah, Mavericks... Mavericks get a hell of a win here. A lot of good things working for them in this game. It's good to see that they've reissued a statement now pretty much to the rest of the league that, uh, yeah, we know what happened with the Clippers, but you know, as good as people say the Lakers are, people say the Lakers might be the best team in the Western Conference. I don't think that. I think it's the Clippers. But a lot of people will say they think the Lakers are arguably the best team in the Western Conference. Dallas is saying, okay, well, if they're arguably the best they don't have the guys to really stop Luka or to slow him down. Not even that the Clippers full-on stopped him, but they slowed him down enough that he gets 22 points with, uh, I think, 15 of those coming at the free throw line in that game. So, yeah, this is a a quality, quality win for Dallas here. They are next up going to go to New Orleans. This next week is going to be some interesting travel for the Mavericks here as they are going to go... Let's see, they're going to go to New Orleans, back to the AAC to host the Minnesota Timberwolves, and then they will host after that. They'll have a few days off instead of just one day off. They'll host then on Saturday, December 7th to close out the week, the Pelicans again 
but this time at the double AC for the first time. So interesting there to see what they're going to be able to do. It looks like they'll probably get a chance to face the, the Pelicans three times without Zion, which is really lucky for them as well. But uh, we'll keep an eye on that and let you know as that game gets closer. Meanwhile, the Mavericks are, what, 13 wins now? Let me take a look at the Western Conference standings. Uh, 13 and 6 now for the Mavericks. Three and a half back of the Lakers. And yeah, every team ahead of them is on at least a one-game losing streak. How about that? The Lakers, the Clippers, and the Nuggets have all lost a game. Mavericks with the fourth best record in the Western Conference right now. That's pretty impressive stuff. And they've got quality wins against the Raptors, against the Lakers, against the Rockets, against the the Nuggets. Lots and lots of good stuff going on for Dallas here. I would even throw the Suns one in that too, just because the Suns are a playoff team if the playoffs started today, which obviously is super early. But the Suns are the eight seed presently slotted right now in the Western Conference. And you hadn't won in Phoenix since October of 2015. So to get that win was pretty huge as well. Speaking of which, Dallas historically through its whole franchise, uh, Mark Followell had this stat during the game. Dallas has played in LA against the Lakers, whether we're talking Staples Center or the previous arena. They have played them 80 times. And with this win, marked just their 20th victory. So this is historically always been a difficult road matchup for the Mavericks. So hey, yeah, you slayed a little bit of a beast in Phoenix with that trend going against you for a good good stretch of time there. You, you had lost five straight to the Lakers, including you know that heartbreaker early on in the year where you had your chance for your first major statement. And now as a result, you're sitting here and you're riding pretty high. Luka Doncic is making things happen, making this team lethal. He is probably one of the best pick and roll players in the league, just understanding the spacing and uh, he's very good at putting his man in jail, going off the pick and roll, and before his man can hedge back, kind of slowing down and shifting in front of him to put him on his back hip. That allows him that extra little tick to make the defensive player either have to commit to him, therefore leaving the pass, the dump off, or the alley-oop open to hit the guy who set the screen and then rolled, or for a kick out, or for Luka just to hit that floater inside, which he's been connecting on about 60% roughly uh, of his attempts within that few feet of the rim there so really really good stuff there um there's a great piece on that as well going further into Luca and how he is basically mastering the pick and roll not quite fully mastered but how he is uh taking kind of potentially that next step for the pick and roll you've had different eras of it in terms of different strategy different ways of defending it different ways of uh utilizing it to its full benefit the current era uh, as the article points out is like the Nash Stoudemire era and that was obviously the the early aughts Phoenix Suns. So Luca, as the article says, could be kind of leading you either into the absolute perfection of that model or potentially ushering in a new era depending on how things go. He still has some little areas there to work on, though. Just stuff that he can improve on. Nothing he's just bad at, obviously. But uh, this is this is really impressive stuff here. And uh, that's going to that's gonna do it for my time. I don't want to ramble too much here. Enjoy, enjoy the day, enjoy this victory, and uh, we will get back to it here in, let's see, when is the next game? I got the next one on there, Tuesday, against the Pelicans, back in New Orleans here. So, I'm DDP, this is the Dallas Prospect, don't forget to like this video, leave a comment below, and uh, always remember, every legend was once a prospect. Salute.